Rob, there are two things we talk about a ton on our show. One is defense in depth, how critical it is. And the second thing is, and pretty much everyone who's listening has this problem, they have the multiple tools doing the same darn thing, which that and defense in depth don't quite go together, do they here? Absolutely not. Too many tools, too many agents, too many consoles, too much knowledge required. Alerts going here, there, everywhere. I mean, alert fatigue is a real thing. You're fooled into believing it's in depth because you've got multiple tools, but multiple tools acting at the same level, which is not defense in depth, is it? Doing fundamentally the same thing. I mean, the vast majority of cybersecurities today are concerned with good and bad. So what is bad? I'm going to find the bad things. And I'm going to hopefully stop them, delete them, remediate them for you. ThreatLocker, as I understand, you have designed an architecture that creates true, distinct levels to essentially catch at different points when things essentially fall through the cracks. The first approach is about protection. So it's about controls. It's about fundamentally default deny or deny by default. So it's about blocking those things that shouldn't be allowed to run, that don't need to run in your environment, whether they be good or bad. Most organizations have some kind of an allow list of some fo- form for programs to allow them to run in their environment. This often can cause things to break down, can't they? Absolutely. I mean, one of the problems historically has always been the amount of work involved in managing an allow list solution. We basically make it easy. We make it manageable for even smaller organizations. There's a couple of ways we do that. I mean, first of all, we create the set of rules required automatically. You don't need to do that yourself. You don't need to figure out all the software that's needed on all the computers. We'll see that software and create a set of policies for you. So you just review that and make sure everything looks okay. Then you secure it. The other way that we make it easier and the other way that it's really important is that historically, the biggest problem with allow listing has been the question of what happens when software updates. And usually what happens when software updates is it breaks. So the way we solve that problem is we've got a basically a database of over 4,000 common applications that we maintain definitions for. So even app team is 60 people working 24-7, 365, checking for updates. Is there a new update? Catalog it. Add it to the definition. It gets pushed out to anyone who's using it. So we effectively take the heavy lifting out of allow listing. Do we have levels below this too? The next layer, I suppose you'd call it, is what we call ring fencing. So ring fencing is about controlling those applications that are allowed to run in your environment. So it could be core parts of Windows. It could be things like PowerShell and Command Prompt and RegServe, all those things that are required to run on your machine. It's about pairing back the permissions that they have things that they're allowed to do. If your line of business application only needs to access and align, you know, data in a particular location, then why would you allow it to access information anywhere else? If you, Why would you allow something other than your backup software to access a backup repository? For those of you who want to do that uh, as well in the, your environment and you want to learn more about what ThreatLocker is doing, well, check out their website. There's the address right there, threatlocker.com. Go check it out. 